everyone good morning shall today's topic is java multi threading that is used with the java programming all right start with the multi threading so, so whenever we talk about the thread that is a lightweight process in the operating system in the same way there is a java multi threading that is available in the programming language that demonstrated that means we can develop the multi threaded program using the java now, what is the multi meaning of multi-threaded program that contains one or more part that can run concurrently and each part can handle different tasks at the same time that makes optimal use of the available resources, especially when your computer has multiple CPU. So if the computer has a, of you have a multiple CPU, that means the work is shareable among the multiple CPUs. So we can run the, uh, the task concurrently and each part can handle different tasks at the same time that makes optimal use of the available resources that is used over here. And by definition, when we say about the multi multitasking, that means multiple processes also share or, or share the common processing resource such as the CPU. And this also extends the idea of the multitasking into the application where you can subdivide specific operations within a single application into the individual threads. Each of the threads can turn in a parallel and the operating system divides. It is the responsibility of the OS, that is the operating system that divides the Processing time not only among the different application but also among the each thread within the application. And this also enables you to write in a way where multiple devices can proceed concurrently in the same program. So this will proceed concurrently in the same program. That means at the same time multiple activities can proceed, multiple activities can do. This is a Java multi-threading that can develop the multi-threaded program. Next topic is the same, that is the life cycle of a thread. What is the life cycle of a thread? How it is born, how it is done, yet how it starts and at last how it dies. So this, yes, yes, next diagram that shows the complete life cycle of a thread. So there is a new, that is available in the oval, runnable, waiting, everything is available in the oval shape. So after the new, there is a program start thread using the start function, then goes to the enable, and then there's an unlock signal, signal over, then wait lock, wait sleep, interval expires for the thread complete. So there are multiple parts. When it goes from the new to the enable, it will thread or it will start using the start function. Then from the run to the waiting, how it is go, going from the run to the waiting, that is used for the wait log. Then from the waiting to the runnable, that is unlock signal or signal all. Then uh, runnable to the time waiting, that is a wait sleep. Then time waiting to the runnable, that is the interval expires. And from runnable to the terminated, there is a thread completes. So this is with from the new to the runnable, then unlock the signal or the signal all then uh, time waiting that is from the unable to the time waiting uh, again the two arrows one is a wait sleep one is the interval expires then from the unable to the terminated there is the threads that completes this is the program or this is the life cycle of the thread that is how it built how it run how it starts how it dies that is terminating now let's see one by one so when whenever we are using or whenever we are saying that there is a new so new thread begins to its life cycle in the new state, it remains in its state until the program starts the thread. It is also refers to as a bone thread. That means this is the birth of the thread that is done by the new. This is the first stage in the life cycle. Then next one is a runnable. So after a newly born thread is started out, the thread becomes runnable. And thread in this case or in this state is considered to be executing its task. Then after this, there's a waiting. So sometimes a thread transitions to the waiting state while the thread waits for another thread to perform a task. And whenever we are using the thread, that transitions back to the runnable state only when another thread signals waiting the, or signals a waiting thread to the continue the executing. So whenever we are using the execution, whenever we are using the waiting state, that will use for the running or the waiting state while the thread waits for another thread to perform a task. 
and this goes back to the renewable states only when another threat signal wait for to the continue execution so it waits for the another signal it waits for the another threat to be executing now next is a time waiting so there's a renewable threat that can enter the time waiting state for a specific interval of the time and the threat in this state transition back to the renewable state when that time interval expires and when the event it is waiting for occurs so whenever the event that is waiting for occur or whenever there's an interval that expires that is a time waiting then at last there's a terminating so that the renewable thread enter the terminated state when it completes it starts or otherwise terminate that is a terminating that means finish up or the thread is no more yes it dies So, yes, one is a new, then next is a renewable, that is running stage. The, yes, that means executing the task. Then there is a waiting stage. When the thread waits for the another thread to perform a task, then timed waiting for a specific interval of the time, then terminated, that means it dies. Now, what are the various thread priorities? Each, each and every Java thread has a priority that helps the operating system in determining the order in which threads are executing or scheduled. First of all, Java thread priorities are given in the range. One is a minimum priority that is a constant of the 1 and the maximum that is a 10. And the middle level, we can say the normal priority that is a 5. So this is ranging from the 1 to the 10 and the normal is 5. So 1 is min underscore priority that is a constant 1 then max underscore priority that is a uh, constant 10 and each and every thread is also given with the norm that is norm rm that is underscore priority that is a constant of 5 and threads with the higher priority are more important to program and should be allocated processor time before 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 uh, lower priority thread so before allocating or before using or loading the priority threads we are allocating the processors however the thread priorities cannot guarantee that the order in which threads executes and very much it is platform independent the very much it is platform independent for the thread priorities then next is create the thread by implementing renewable interface so if your class is intended to be executed as a thread then you can achieve this by implementing the renewable interface so that means we are using uh, or how to execute the thread by that is or how to execute the task by the thread that is run by the renewable interface any doubts any confusion till now yes mitty benjamin any doubts Yeah, these are the yeah these are the stages or we can say the life cycle of a thread because it starts with the birth with the new it starts with the death that is terminating or terminated whatever Yeah, this is same as we have started in the operating system. Now, let's see what are the various step by which, or what are the various stages by which we can create the thread by implementing the renewable interface. So, step number one is you need to implement a run method provided by the renewable interface. So first step is you need to implement a run method. Whenever you want a run method that is provided by the renewable interface. This method provides entry point for the thread and you will put your complete business logic inside this method and there's a complete syntax that is used there's a public void run then uh, step number two is our second step that you will initialize on 
yeah, initialize a thread object using the following constructor that is a thread the enable thread object then string thread name so whenever you are using the thread object that is an instance of a class it implements an enable interface and the thread name is the name of the given thread that is used with the new thread that is step number two step number three once a thread is created you can start it calling by using the start method which executes a call to the run method and this is the simple syntax to use the start method okay all right so when we talk about the step number one so this this implements a run method that is provided by the runnable interface and this method provides an entry point for the thread and how will you put up by using the run function so what is the syntax over here this is public void run then second step is to initialize a thread using the constructor this is a thread then runnable thread object string thread name so where thread object is an instance of a class that implements a renewable interface and thread name is a name given to a new object then step number three once a thread object is created you can start it by calling the start method which executes a call to run method and this is the following the syntax that is used for the start function that is void start now this is the example that shows how to create a new thread and start it running. So this is the class runnable demo implements runnable private thread t private string thread name. This is the runnable demo string name thread name equals to name system dot out dot printer and creating plus thread name. So we are creating a class that is a runnable demo that implements the runnable. This implements space this inherits the Yes, it inherits a runnable demo class and the new derived class is a runnable. Then private uh, thread t, private string thread name, then runnable demo string name, uh, thread name equals to name, whatever the output that is or whatever the syntax that is given in the name that is stored in the thread name. Then system dot out dot printl and creating plus thread name. Then public void run, system dot out dot printl and running plus thread name. So when it's creating, then running. In try block that starts with the four go till zero. No, no, this yes, this just don't go till zero. This is still one because this is greater than zero, not greater than equals to zero. This is four, three, two, and one. Then there is i minus minus that that is decremented each and every time. This part is a initialization. This part is a expression or the condition. Very good. This part is a decrement. So. Yeah, this is the for loop. Then system dot out dot println. This is thread thread name. Then plus yes for denotion into the commas we use a double quotes. Then plus i. Let the thread sleep for a while. So thread dot sleep fifty. Then there's a catch after the trap loop catch. Interrupt exception or interrupted exception e. <sighs> then system dot out dot println thread thread name interrupted then system dot out dot println thread thread name exiting then public void start system dot out dot println starting plus thread name if t equal equals to null then t equals to new thread this thread name then t to start this is start or this is using or this is used with the start function this is t dot start Then public class test thread, then static void main string here gf. This is a runnable demo r1 equals to new runnable demo, then thread one r1 dot start, runnable demo r2, runnable demo thread two r2 dot start. This will produce the following output that is used. So just Now everyone done with this program. Any doubts anywhere in this program? That is runnable demo. Creating the thread. So this is the output versus creating thread one, starting thread one, creating thread two, starting thread. After this, there's a running of the thread one, then thread one, four, 
running thread 2, thread 2, 4, 1, 3, 1, 2. So these are the various numbers, these are the various lines that is represented with the help of the new enable demo that, that is thread 2 or the thread 1. Now next is create the thread by extending the thread class. So the second way to thread or create a thread by creating or is to create a new class that extend the thread class using the following two, two simple steps. Now this approach provides more flexibility in handling much more multiple threads that is created using the available methods in the thread class. Now there is a step number one, you need to override the run method available in the thread class. This method provides entry point for the thread and you will put you complete business logic inside that thread. And this is the simple syntax of the run method. This is public void run. Next is start. For the starting of the once the thread object is created, it can start by using the start method which executes a call to run methods. And this is the simple syntax of the start method. And this is the preceding program that is rewritten to the extended classes. Everything is same but only the program that is extended with the extended class, extended thread. So the public void start system dot out dot print and then starting then thread name if t equal equals to null so we are creating a new thread that is stored in the t new thread this thread name then t dot start then public class uh, test thread this is again the public static void main string args then thread demo t1 t1 equals to new thread demo thread mine uh, thread one then t2 that is for the thread demo Everything is same, but only the we extended the thread. So this is uh, the output, same, creating, starting, creating, starting, then running thread one. This is thread one four. This is two, two four one three two three one two 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 one one two one. Now, what are the various thread methods that is available? So, following is a list of the important method that is available in the thread class. First is public void start. So, to start the thread in a separate path of execution, then invokes the run method on this thread object. So, first of all, it sets out the or it starts the thread in a separate path of execution. Then it invokes the run method on this thread object. The next is public void run. So if this thread object was initialized using a separate unable target or unable object, then the run method is invoked on that unable object on that that, that target or because not that thread. Then public final void set name, string name. So this changes the name of the thread object. So there is also a get name method for retrieving the name. Then public final void set priority in priority. So this sets out the priority of this thread object and the possible values are between 1 and 10. public final void set daemon boolean on so this parameter of the tree denotes this thread as a daemon thread this will set out as a daemon thread this will use as a public final void set daemon Then uh, public final void join, this is for the long milliseconds and public void interrupt, public final boolean is alive. So this alive is, uh, if the thread is alive, which is any time after the thread that has been started up before it ran for the completion. Again, these are the various methods for a particular thread object that is invoked with the stating method that performs operation on the currently running thread. For example, this is one of the method, public static void yield, so this causes the currently uh, running thread to yields to any other threads of the same priority that are waiting to be scheduled. Then public stating boolean holds log for the object. This returns a tree of the current thread holds a log on the given object. Then public static void in dumpstrack that is the sprints a stack trace for the currently running thread which is useful when debugging a multi-threaded application. Uh, 
and this is the example that shows how to use the third class demo the demonstrate or the methods of the third class so consider a class that is display message which implements an enable class so when is file name display message or java now next is creates a thread to implement the enable public class display message implements enable then private string message so we are using the string object uh, string data type and messages of the string data type that is of the private type then public display message string message this dot message equals to message then public void run while true system dot out dot println message this is a next the, this is the next java th multi threading concept that is used so one is a, one is a java or the thread synchronization handling the threads intercommunication handling the thread dead load then measure thread or the thread operations So when we start two or more of threads within a program, there may be conditions where multiple threads try to access the same resources and finally they can produce unforeseen result due to concurrency issue. For example, if multiple threads try to write within the same file, they may, may they may corrupt the data because one of the thread can override the data or while one thread is opening the same file at the same time, another thread is might be closing the same file. So the need or there is a need to synchronize the action of multi-threaded or the multiple threads and make sure that only one thread can access the resources at a given point in time. This is implemented using a concept known as the monitors. And each object in a Java is associated with the monitor, which is a thread can lock or unlock. And only one thread at a time may hold a lock on a monitor. And Java programming language provides a handy way of creating the threads and synchronizing their tasks by using the synchronized blocks. And you keep shared resources within this block, and this is the general format of a synchronized statement. This is synchronize object identifier, access shared resources, variable, and other shared resources. The next is multi-threading example with a synchronization. Multi-threading multi example with a synchronization. Then how to handle the threads intercommunication. The, these are the three methods that is used for the handling the threads for the intercommunication. One is a wait, one is a notify, one is notify all. Then the thread thread log that is synchronized is because the synchronized keyword causes the executing thread to block. This is the solution and these are the various thread operations. One is the suspend function, stop function, resume, wait, notify. And, and this, this is used for the sleeve, that is thread.sleeve1000, r1.suspend, then system.out.println, suspending the first thread, then thread.sleeve1000, then r1.sleeve. So this is used for the r1.sleeve, r1.resume, r1.suspend. These are the various methods that is used with the thread within the trap block and the cache block it is used with the interrupted. That is interrupted exception E, system.out.println, main thread, interrupted. Then again, this is the tribe log, then system.out.println, this is